Hey, howdy ho Lions fans, welcome to the Detroit Lions podcast, this is episode oh, 465. This is, uh, what is it, our NFL Combine preview, and it's the official Detroit Lions podcast for the coolest part of Reddit that you'll yet to have seen. Uh, I am your dashing host, Chris, and with me is my good friend and equally dashing and quite effervescent combinated co-host, Jeff the Riz Rizden. How you doing, brother? I am live from Indy at the from the lovely Stabers Suites across the street from the Lucas Oil Field Stadium. It's fun to be here. Woo. Do you feel do you feel combinated? I do. Oh, I do. Good. good. I, like, I like to hear that. All right, we've got a lot to talk about yeah. today. Today's show, let's talk about we uh gonna talk about foxes entering the den. Well, that's a good one. Uh DL coach is in the house, former Rands player with the name who starts with J. Could he be on his way? More likely than we have talked about previously. Combine presser, we got you covered on everything that went on there. Some new news from Jalen Carter. Riz from the Combine, he's there now. I mean, it doesn't look like that, but he's he's right there, there. And he's got everything you need to know. We got that a whole lot more, maybe even a little dust along the way. Riz, my friend, are you ready to go, brother? We got a great show here. Oh yeah, let's do it. Let's kick this off and break it down. I do the volume a little there. It was blowing my ears out. Okay. Oof. I, I, I'm real hopeful that my Wi-Fi in this hotel lasts because yesterday, around this time, everybody got back to their hotel room and logged on. <laughs> it wasn't great. So fingers are crossed. <laughs> oh, you're, pu- you're pushing a megabit right now. So we were okay. And we're okay. I'm okay, good. I'm watching good. the background. I got your numbers here, brother. All right. Really quick. We want to go through a couple things as we do in the beginning as we get everyone here and we gather for the the, the kickoff of the show first we want to thank nash zaitona hope i got that right thank you for the subscribe appreciate it you all hit the subscribe button please and the like button it helps us out a great deal and uh, we love having you on the show and it's a it's a great show to watch good stuff going on uh good information all the time we'll talk about some of that and some of the insider stuff that we have this week with combine going on a lot of people shuffled around a lot of news coming so we'll get to that uh, one also for the po- the folks that are in the Slack right now, I need to let you know. Get into the March Madness pool. Hit up Wisco in the Slack. We have a, it's great every year. It's uh got the brackets going. Um and uh, ready to pick on on uh, what is it Super Sunday 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 Selection Sunday. Sunday Selection Sunday. You only need the edge of your seat. You don't pay for the whole thing. But we'll sell you the whole seat. But you'll only need the edge. The whole seat is only five dollars a month or more for a Slack. Go to patreon.com slash Detroit Lions Podcast or join as a member on the uh the YouTube and just email me at Chris at Detroit Lions Podcast.com. A shot of you getting that because right. YouTube is funny. That'll get you access to the Slack. You can play in the March Madness pool. You can hang out with all the best Lions chat on the internet. All right, really quick, one thing to clean up from last week's show, Riz. Um, I made a grievous error. I was talking munching and I meant Frankfurters. Um <laughs> <laughs> They, uh, they, the game in Germany is not in Munich. It was there last year. I just made the assumption that it was going to be there again. Uh, but no, it's not under the the wing. They will be back at the home of the Frankfurt Bayern. Galaxy of the World League of American Football. Yes, yes. Or the, or the European uh, League, NFL uh, Europe. Luva Frankfurt, the Lions of Frankfurt, who play in the German Ice Hockey League there. Uh, so there you go. Um, a couple Lions in town, maybe, right? Uh, so that's where it is. Yeah, Isn't I, by the way, I will sure tell you. Right. Go ahead. I will tell you that uh, the Chiefs people that I know think that this will indeed be the game. They don't know that. Obviously, nobody knows that. But uh, if they were betting, they would bet on the Chiefs hosting the Lions in Frankfurt. Yeah, Chicago is pretty certain that they're going to be there. Um, I'm not so so much so, but they did. Chicago make is also game. certain that they're trading out of the number one pick, and I'm not so sure that it happens. <laughs> things things. Things are changing. We'll talk about that. Um, yes, yes, they are. They changed a lot today. A whole lot today. It was um, a long I, day. I want to go into, we, we did a, a, a question. It was like right at the end of the show. I think a lot of people might have missed it. And I want to I throw this one up again, because and then we'll clean this one up next week. 
Uh, hit hashtag DLP O line love if you've got a, a name. But we're looking for a nickname for the O line here in Detroit, and um, we got some bunch of bunch of input, bunch of good answers. But I want to make sure we give everyone a good shot. I want to get the very very best, and we'll, we'll come up with a prize for you, maybe something from Nat- fanatics or something like that uh, to to round out your day, make you happy, uh, gift card or something. But um, we'll figure something out for you. I'm looking for the best. We really want something that's good, sticky, descriptive, different. You know, something something really, really good. I've seen a lot. Not saying we don't have it. Not saying we do. But if you have something, hit hashtag O-Line Love. I want to go, though, for a real question this week. And I want you guys to use the comments. And, um, if you know, you can use Twitter as well. Just hashtag DLP for this one. The question, I'll start with the question. Then I'll kind of dive into why I'm asking it. But what would it take for you to stop watching the NFL. And this this is a, this one occurred to me. We had a chat going on in the in the Slack. And it's it's this something I felt when I and, and you can it's always dangerous to predict the top of a market, but I I just feel like the uh the NFL is getting to be to that point of oversaturation right now where and and they are pulling the udders and getting every last drop of milk out of this stuff. Um, you, you talked a little bit in the slack about the Wi-Fi dying for the media at the combine, uh, concessions and food not being so spectacular. Oh, like, can I can I add to this? Yeah, go for it. This As is- we got back from the Brad and Dan press conferences today, we walked up to the media room, which is a half a mile walk away, and parenthetically, mm-hmm. and the lights were out, like. They couldn't figure out how the light, like the power was on, but the lights were out in the meeting room. So I grabbed my crap and came back to the hotel and wrote here. <laughs> it's not, by the way, uh, the security guard uh, has been asleep more than awake uh, at, at the door of the meeting room too. So it's, it's, it's so, just. It's like Woodstock 99 from what I'm hearing <laughs> as far as security there. Uh, they cut the cost. It's not, they? I mean, yeah, they, they have definitely shaved some things back. They have reconfigured. Uh, the media area, specifically more so the radio row area. Uh, I, I was there today for a little while, and it's uh, a lot more cramped than it used to be. Um, it's it, it's giving the illusion that they're ready to move on from here, uh, which is sad because everybody loves coming to Indiana and Indianapolis. It's a great town. You can walk indoors everywhere here. Yep. Um, great places to eat. Great you know, great hotels that are easy access, uh, and it's. It's going to be disappointing when they leave for Los Angeles, where everything is spread out, and they they put it at their NFL campus out there by SoFi Stadium. But uh, that's it. It it feels very inevitable at this point. Um, yeah. We got at least one more year here in Indiana, uh, and that's probably going to be it. And that's uh, that makes me sad. So it's almost like they're pushing it away. And and look, Indy's a fine place. I'm not I'm not knocking it. But there's so much more money to be made in Vegas. There's so much more to be made in LA in a big market. We we felt the push in in Senior Bowl too, very similar that with especially with the the competition from the the Shrine Bowl, what they're doing there. That Mobile, as awesome as a location as it is for the closeness and the intimacy of the event, it may be in, on on a short a short time frame. So we have that going on. You know, again, the question, what would it take for you to stop stop looking or watching the NFL? You have the whole Deshaun Watson thing, which for a number of people in Cleveland, as, as, a, as a Clevelander yourself, um, either, you know I, people stopped watching. There, over- there are members of my immediate family who have been Browns fans for their entire lives who do not watch the team anymore and do not pay attention at all anymore. Yeah, um, yeah. That's just the way it is. Um, I will tell you that I, I, I quit covering the team full time because of it. I it's just I don't I don't need that in my life. I, I got other things going on. Yeah. Plus yeah. the lines are better. That's a lot more fun too. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan, for uh, this is to help Riz cover going Dutch. Yeah, okay, we got that. <laughs> <laughs> well he's out there. Thank you for the super chat, brother. Um so you, we have we ha- you have chat. you have that going on, right? And it's kind of they've pasted over it. You can go into 
Um, I mean, the Lions fans the, see the officiating, and and there's you know no one has hard evidence of of any fixing. Some people absolutely believe it. Um, it it's the truth is is probably somewhere just in, incompetence, but it's 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 sometimes just really really strange, right? How how these things work out at specific times. It's it's called into question. Vegas getting involved calls it into question for some people. There's that. Then you get to let's talk about the Washington and Dan Snyder and the follies that he's gotten away with for ages. And we're finding out the NFL might have covered some of that up. And now he's super inconvenient for the NFL. And I'm going to say John Gruden may have a real axe to grind as, oh, he's the one guy that got smashed in the Washington information, and then we're just shutting it down. There's nothing more, and now more things are coming out of that. And, God, I hate to say it, but where there's smoke, there's fire. You know there's probably a bunch of train wrecks in those emails and that information that's there. The, this, this could be, and we'll see how wide it cracks open because the NFL is very, very good at keeping their, their arms and keeping some things under wraps. But all these things going on, right? And I'm not saying the NFL is, is, is terrible or whatever. I'm just saying these things are starting to add up. It feels like there's an oversaturation going on, almost a big that people hate. Feeling like the money grab. I'll go to Woodstock 99, right? People, Woodstock 99, the people turned. I was there. Because they felt like <laughs> they were getting hosed. They were getting ripped $12 for a bottle of water back in 99. That's crazy. Um, I, the, what happened there was a direct result of getting hosed by the promoters. And at what point does something like that happen in the NFL? What is it for you? Use the comments. Use the uh, the uh, the hashtag DLP. Let's talk about. It. I'm interested in what it is for people because it's. I mean, there's some people we're seeing it here. I you know I'd have to be blind to stop watching the NFL. And, and that's hey, I love the NFL too. I can't say there's literally nothing they could do but poke my eyes out to make me not watch it because I've I've I walked. I used to love baseball. I used to absolutely love, love baseball, and I walked away in the '90s. And now they're trying to shorten the games up for TV. Screw the people in stands, right? Because TV is where the money. It's at, funny but. that you say that, Chris, because that, that was these like I was I was a huge baseball guy. I, I took baseball mm-hmm. history class in college with Tar- Charles Alexander, who was my faculty advisor. Uh, I uh, I briefly was a member of Saber. I haven't watched a baseball game other than it like passing across my screen as I sh- shuffle through channels in five years yeah. and I don't miss it one bit. Yeah. Like you can, it, it got boring, it got overwrought. Um, the Tony LaRussification of baseball absolutely killed the sport for me. And the unctuousness of their their commissioner and the people who were protectors of the gateway, like, oh, you, the steroid, like the whole steroid era and then their reaction to it and how pompous people like Tim Kirchin and people like that, uh, Buster Olney, got in defending things and, and the unwritten rules of baseball. And mm-hmm. you don't want to break up another, like, sh- shut up. Yeah. It got annoying as hell. And uh, it drove me away. And I, I, I haven't been back and I have no inclination to go back. Yep. Uh, I don't see, I see, here's one, JL, I stopped watching baseball because I realized it was egregiously boring. I don't see that happening with the sport of football. Oh, they could do that. Trust me the you know you, you've got to stop concussions you got to stop injuries whatever i mean they could do any number of crazy things don't put it past the power of of roger goodell to wreck something good uh again what if there's the liv that, that's competing against the nfl right the somebody mentioned earlier I, did, I missed it sorry the like saudi money rolling in and creating a competitor and players go right they pay enough it's it, there's it's it's interesting i'm just wondering again i'm not saying that you know i'm not predetermining the death of the nfl but i'm just wondering where people are because i think a lot of people are in a lot of different places and and ask yourself honestly right ask yourself honestly okay let's get on to it let's quick go over uh, some key off season dates because those are important we are right now at the scouting combine february 28th through march 6th we'll talk about the combine schedule here shortly uh march 7th the yeah. tag deadline for franchise and transition tags are, is at 4 p.m college Pro days begin on March 7th, the negotiating window, the legal tampering period, which is right after the illegal tampering period. That opens March 13th through 15th. Um, the illegal tampering period, ask Jay Glazer, Matthew Stafford, and Sean McVay about that. Uh, March 15th, the new league year opens. I saw Asian it today. Games. I saw it firsthand today. <laughs> Did he bump I can't say who, but I saw it, I saw it, oh. 
I saw it firsthand today. Yeah, there you go. Uh, New Year League year opens on March 15th, 26th to 29th. NFL League meetings. Uh, OTA begins. OTAs begin on April 17th. April 27th through 29th, you just get the NFL draft in Kansas City. Funny how that works. May 1st, fifth-year option deadline for 2020 NFL draft picks. 5th through the 8th of May is the first rookie minicamp. May 12th through the 15th is the next rookie minicamp. Mid-May, the NFL schedule releases, and we'll find out exactly the date that the Lions play with their Frankfurter. And mid-July, the franchise tag contract negotiation deadline hits. I think I got it all there, Riz. Yeah. We don't really have to worry about the franchise tag. The Lions have no candidates for it. So. No, no, no. Unless you really want to pay DJ Chark $19.5 million. That's going to happen. No, no. We'll see that happening. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Uh, wait till we start talking about O-line. <laughs> we'll start thinking, seeing how things next year when those contracts start rolling. We'll see how. So you want to pay Evan next... Brown, was it 16.8? I think it is. Evan Brown's going to get starter money. He might get. He might actually get that somewhere. <laughs> like, he's getting starter money. He's, he's he, yes. Uh, <laughs> had a good conversation with somebody last night who thinks they know where it's going to be too. And it ain't Detroit. <laughs> he's going to get starter money. Um, so we, we we've got that. Um, let's see. He will be he will be an NFL starting center next year. There's very very little doubt in my mind, mm-hmm. and your mind, and some other people's minds too. Mm-hmm. His own as well, from what I've been led to believe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about Carter in a little bit. Um, it's an interesting case since we're talking about um, that's that's one obviously breaking today. Um, yeah, I think the offensive line is interesting. I think there's some interesting stuff going to happen there. I, I would not worry um, too much about wh- where where things are. Um, yeah, Evan Brown's a great dude, great great guy, uh, but he's just he's just too good. He's just too good, and he's going to go and start him. He, he yeah. outplayed being, yeah. He's, he's, That's what you want to do. He's not going to be the starting center. Is He's not going to be the starting center in Detroit. He's better at center than he is at guard. Why not go chase that? Like, I, yeah. I, I wish him well. I hope, I, hope, I hope it works out great for him. I hope. I, I specifically hope the team that, that I talked, the people that I talked to cover last night um, get him, and I think he'd be great there. Uh, and yeah. I would like to see it happen because uh, it would be a good fit for him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so there you go. I think, you know, there's there's a lot to be done. I think you'll see, well, join the Slack, you'll see. All right, let's talk about uh, the first big topic we have. John Fox enters the den. The Fox is in the den house. Um, senior defensive consultant. I I think this is absolutely fantastic for Aaron Glenn, for the Detroit Lions defense. Um, and I don't want to under sell Aaron Glenn, right? I, I, I just, I want to be really, really clear, no, but yeah. John Fox brings a little something. Um, it, what, what, what was it that, uh, that Brad Holmes says? It, it helps him with his blind spots. It helps him with areas yeah. that he has and everybody has them. And oh my gosh, no one, I don't want to say no one, but very few have eyes like John Fox. What a great dude to have at your side working with you. If you're building out your defense as the Detroit Lions, yeah, I'll uh, I'll go off Dan of what Dan said. Um, he said uh, he talked about how first off that Fox was his defensive was a defensive coordinator with the Giants when when he was there as a player. So that's where their relationship comes from. For those of you who are looking for the etymology of that, um, but a successful he's been a very successful head coach with three different teams in this league. He's been out of the league about five years. Went back to Indy last year in the same capacity as a senior defensive assistant. Man, you can see the fire in him. I mean, it was impressive. Uh, he then said, I think he's going to be great at helping AG watch his blind spots, which is what Johnny Morton, who's now in uh, Denver uh, as their passing game coordinator, did for us on offense with Ben Johnson last year. I think he'll be a great addition. And uh, I agree with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So The blind um... spots thing I think is good because I do think if you're going to have a criticism of Aaron Glenn over the last couple of years, is that maybe his vision is a little narrow of what his players can and cannot do well. And I think he got better at it, but mm-hmm. I think having Fox in there, um, I, I think that helps quite a bit. Absolutely. I really do. It's a good hire. Um, they missed, they, they did not have, so Dom Capers was here in 2021. Uh, it's interesting because uh, Brad actually, or Dan talked about how much Capers helped and, the impression that I've gotten from a lot of different places is that Capers didn't actually do much of anything. Um, I heard that same thing. And I, I gave a good analogy for that in the Slack. You'll have to check that out. 
five bucks. It's worth five bucks. Um, but uh, uh, they 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 missed the role. They clearly missed the role last year. Then they didn't have anybody in it, and it was it was definitely a priority for them to get somebody in. John Fox, sixteen years as a head coach across three different teams, he's worked in a number of different defensive schemes, styles under different head coaches with different defensive coordinators. This is a guy who's seen a lot of football. I I, I love it. Uh, I'll tell you. He, I think he's only six. He's what sixty four years old, so he's got he's got a few years at this if he wants to. Well, this is the thing: you've got Aaron Glenn out there look, interviewing for jobs, and the question was, who's going to replace him? The replacement's in the building now. John Fox is an absolute stud replacement. If Aaron Glenn winds up going somewhere else, John Fox has a right now. He has a place he can land. He can finish things out if he wants to. I mean, I mean, he can. He's got a number of options. But you now have a guy in the building who becomes a a an heir apparent if Aaron Glenn uh, does get hired or decide to leave. So I and and I'm going to say this, but it, this isn't. I'm, I'm not. I don't want to Im, 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 imply anything. Or if he gets fired, because that seems to be a tradition every year a coach gets fired, right? I mean, you have somebody there. And, and I, I hate to say it this way, but if you're building an organization, is, is, think of it from a leadership position. It's always nice to, for somebody, to, if they get sick, they win the lottery, hit by a greyhound, or you got to fire them, to have somebody who can replace them. End of story, period. Yeah. So uh, this this actually does make a lot of sense from a number of angles for the, for the Detroit lions. So uh, I enjoy, this is Don H. This is really great. This is really smart. I'm enjoying how the lions are coaching coaches. It's exactly it there. It, and, and what you're seeing, you're hearing it on the national media. Now you're starting to hear how they're developing players and how players, and you're seeing it with Evan as he goes on, you'll that news will come sometime, but you're seeing them develop players. You're seeing things like that happen, but now you're seeing them also develop coaches and the idea of, Oh my gosh, what if we lost this guy next man up next man up? And they're doing this development and they've become, I've, I've told you guys, and this is, this is inside um, from inside the lions are a destination for players and coaches. And from Two years ago, Riz, from where we were two years ago as a team or three years ago, we were absolutely, you know, same poles of a magnet. The the the, the rejection of each other of of talent in, in Detroit was full on. I mean, it was it was full. And and the opposite's true now. I mean, we are a magnet for talent, both player and and coaches. That's gonna play out in 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 pay, in expect expected pay and in contracts. Um coaches a little bit but with i think what you're going to see with players players want to be here players will I, I, i'll take a guy like big v and we'll just you know we'll mm -hmm. just put this there big v is a guy that he's he's made a lot of money for not a lot of play time we'll put it that way right um i would expect a guy like him wants to be here he's a super talented guy if he can be on the field there's ways that things can be restructured that if he's not on the field, he's not getting paid, right? Period. If he's on the field, especially with what happened last year, it's it's pushed off to the next year's cap. So you don't have to be impacted with what you're doing now. It gives you so much more flexibility. Um, I would look for a restructure there as an example. I and I would look for him to say, I'm willing to bet on myself rather than go somewhere else and grab a you know, some kind of contract. He's going to want to be here. I'm, yeah. I, and I, I would, I would look to see that worked out here over the course of the next couple of weeks. I, it's, it I would just difference. say, I would just say, um, I have a couple of points. First off, uh, I don't think big V's getting cut. I don't see that happening. And that, that based out on a lot of different things. It's, again, it's just my read on the situation, but they, they like him a lot more than, than I think most fans would believe. Um, mm -hmm. I say that also about Charles Harris, yep. uh, if you're looking for one of Harris or Romeo to go, it's probably going to be Romeo. Like again, that's just reading between lines and guessing, but that's that's where my guess would be at. Um, Brad, to your first point, talked a lot today about when the first, like the first year, he's like, "Is that guy going to want to come here?" And like he's like, "We don't really have that problem now." I'm going to I'm paraphrasing for him. It's it's a nice place to be, uh, and it was it was a, it was interesting because. Most of the questions that got asked today of Brad and Dan came from us locals, but there were some national people that asked, and that was one of the questions that was asked by a national person mm -hmm. was, 
you know, are, are you finding it easier to attract people? And uh, he, he said, basically, yes, it's a lot easier now, <laughs> now, that, now that we're winning, now that we have a culture established, now that people see what, what we're all about. Yeah, people do want to come here. And uh, he's right. He's, it, it's, it's a different game now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a it's different time. And uh, it's, it's, it's kind of cool. By the way, I will say this. The, the Dan press conference ended with a Packers guy asking a question of how important it was to beat the Packers three times in a row and winning at Lambeau. And Dan, like, started to dodge it. And then he's like, yeah, it was really nice to, to beat that quarterback, yeah. <laughs> among other things in, the, in his statement. It was, it was fun. That was a good way to end, end the day. And that's why, that's why guys like that are in positions like that. Because my response is, uh, let me reverse that on you, ask you how is it to lose three times, right? I mean, that's, that's, the, the, yeah. that's a, the real question because that's where it's coming from. But it was, it's, it's one of those things. But I would watch for Big V to get restructured. I'm just telling you, restructured, and then they can, they can put yeah, some of the, they're, they're the not, risks he's, he's onto too... his contract and onto him to show up because, number one, he wants to be here. Number two, the, the money is he's made. For, for the little bit about amount of play, I mean, it's it's there. It is what it is. Yes. Uh, so he's due. I think it's fourteen million. Uh, he's not going to get fourteen million this year. They're, they will restructure. I'm very very confident mm-hmm. about that. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll move on. Uh, John Scott Jr. joins the Lions as a new defensive line coach. Did you hear that, Chris? I did. And my man I... from Penn State. A little bit of time with the Jets ahead of that. Um, lots of defensive line coaching experience. Um, I'm it, it was the one thing I'll say is, is damn, we were right last week because nobody had any inclination of who this was going to be. This was, and I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to knock on John Scott Jr. at all. So please, no one take it this way, right? But I almost expected with the lockdown on information that was here, like this is draft pick level lockdown that they had on this. I almost expected it to be, you know, some kind of big name, like home run kind of thing. And again, I'm not knocking John Scott. I just didn't expect John Scott to be the guy that I heard of when they made the announcement. Yeah, they uh, and and again, this this goes back to something that Brad said again today is like the the biggest name, the most expensive guy isn't always the guy, the right guy. Um, and in fact, Dan or Brad was pretty clear actually that they're not probably going to chase after expensive people, um, free agents, trades, otherwise. And uh, I, th- I think that's sort of the, the philosophy with the coaching. They are so big on on coaching the coaches and having those guys develop talent. Um, develop, quickly accelerating the development of players. Um, I'll, I'll paraphrase. Both Dan, Brad and Dan said that that that's like their, one of their core values, and they clearly think that John Scott can do that. Uh, he was at so one of his players is here, uh, PJ Mustafer, mm-hmm. and I didn't get to his podium in time. I only caught the very end of his question or his response when he was actually asked about it. Um, and I'm frustrated that I missed that, but uh, uh, I, I will get the quote from it. But he was he was very complimentary towards Scott uh, and said that he actually um, uh, Coach Scott called him to let him know that he was taking the job, like even after PJ had already been gone, which I think is a classy move. Like that shows you know, hey, you know, this guy's not beholden to me anymore. He's he's, he's in the NFL now, uh, but Coach still took the time to to let him know. And I think that, that tells you what kind of a person you're getting in John Scott, who I've never met. Uh, that's great. I, I I like that. That's a nice little anecdote to lead into him. I thought yeah. it was, was very nice. Absolutely. All right. Um, Ryan Williams, will they actually cut Romeo? He's clearly the better Aquara. Riz has had had a hard had a tough one against Romeo for a while. He he it's his it's, claim, uh, man. He was he was cut last so year. So according to Riz. <laughs> he, he, uh, he was hurt last year. Uh so he's um if they're looking to make more cap room available for moves they they and also i will add if you want them to add an edge in the draft which seems to be a very popular notion you cannot justify paying romeo okora and charles harris a combined was it 17 and a half million dollars this year yeah. if neither of them is going to play for you <laughs> because if you're drafting a guy it's because they're better than than both of them right away Yep. That's the that's literally the only reason why you would do it. So, yeah, uh, 
<laughs> it, it, basically, if you want to get better there, somebody's got to go. Like one of the people that is getting bettered than doesn't have a spot on the team anymore. Um, my guess would be that it's because of the way that the coaching staff has talked on and off the record about Charles Harris versus Romeo, um, who I think, by the way, is a better player than Charles Harris. Uh, I, it, it, they save more money by cutting Romeo, and I think that might have a little something to do with it too. Uh, if, if it happens, uh, I would, again, if you want them to draft Miles Murphy, Tyree Wilson, like there's really no purpose on the team for either Charles Harris or Romeo Okwara at that point. Yeah. Now, if you're getting a guy, Will McDonald in the second round, by the way, somebody said that Will McDonald was out as the number eight. Like, no, no, he's not. He, he's a second or third round guy. Uh, the Browns would love to get him if he was younger. Um, he doesn't fit their age guard rails. He's already 24. Um, yeah, yeah if, you, if you're looking at a guy that in the third, fourth round as a developmental more type edge, then you can keep one of those guys. But again, you're not cutting Josh Pascal. You're not cutting Aiden Hutchinson. You're not cutting James Houston. John Kaminsky is all but locked up with the team already. There's four. Harrison Okora makes six. Julian Okora makes seven. Like, you're not keeping seven defensive. If, why, if you're going to make the, the move to draft someone or bring someone in from the outside, that means somebody has to go. Uh, why not shave the biggest salary? And, right? and that you're just. It's the nature of getting better. Good players are going to go, and that's this is one where yes. I think people have to get used to it. But just want to lock that in. Riz hates Okora, so you can put that. You can print it, print it, and ship it. All right, let's move. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because when they got him, I was like his biggest trumpeter. Like, oh, yeah, this is a great addition. People are like, oh, come on. The Giants suck, and they, they're dumping him. I'm like, yeah, because they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. A lot like of he's, questions he's about – He just he got hurt. A lot of questions about <laughs> Levi coming back. And, and look, here's the deal. We saw Cam Akers come back from his Achilles with lightning speed. That was crazy. And he played, and he looked good for a little bit, and then things happened – that like they seem to happen in LA. I mean, that's just, (laughs) it's, we'll see. Um, I don't know that there's going to be, I I hope, I hope for Levi that that there's a sudden change in technology and such sudden magic where he's the first guy to come back from fusion surgery like that. I don't expect it. I just, I just don't expect it. If you're a GM, you never count a guy out until he gets his draft settlement. You can't say that you can't do that because then you're not acting in bad faith, no matter what you are in good faith, no matter what you think. So that just isn't going to work. So I I would just not think about that different surgery for Vitae, different, different piece. So it's, there's potential for him to come back and I would expect him to come back and be able to play. Uh, So there's the difference for um, for the folks. One thing on Levi. um, So, Brad did address the Levi situation. He said that he did see him in the facility recently, just before he came here, uh, and that he is, I don't want to misquote him, um, so I'll just just generalize. He's progressing, but they're still not sure how fast he's progressing and not sure how much that they can ask him to do uh, is the long and the short of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that goes that. And the worst thing you want to do is give him something that he can't do because because right. then you like it, look especially after the the road that tyrell crosby paved <laughs> you can't you you now you're you're locked in i mean let's let's not look a little bit of butthurt in there too but we won't talk about that that's his tweet uh <laughs> more than a little bit <laughs> uh, yeah yeah uh add that to the injury list um but no the um the the, the you, you after that you have to you have to double your cross your t's and double dot your eyes. It's just the reality, yeah. and it's it sucks. It sucks that people yeah wreck things for others. Yeah, I I will tell you that the Lions are preparing for this off season as if Levi will not be part of the plan. Yeah, I think that's right, and I think that's a very prudent move. Yeah. All right, and I don't, I don't think he's a guy that's going to get a shopping cart full of doctors. All right, let's move on. There is a former Rams player 
whose name starts with J. Potentially, there's potential that he mm. would land in Detroit. This is Are you nuts. Triggering me, Chris. I am. I'm tricking you because he was a former Rams player who most really recently was with the Cleveland Browns. His name would be uh, uh, John Johnson the <laughs> third. And Riz, I know you talked about JJ three. Yeah, no, you talked about it in the Slack a little bit. I'd love to hear uh, have you share your thoughts on JJ three and his potential uh, to land and potentially land in Detroit. JJ three would be great, especially if Tracy Walker's not coming back from the Achilles on schedule, which we, we've heard, by the way, that Tracy's ahead of schedule, mm-hmm. um, which would be great. And we've seen if you're looking for videos, a new safety. We've seen his instant yes. videos, like a lot like Okuda, man. And awesome. they, they are <laughs> pump you up videos, man. I want to, you know, you yeah. t- people talk about running through brick walls for, for Campbell. You see Tracy Walker's, it's like, okay, put up two walls. I'm going through. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's very encouraging. Uh, but remember, uh, Deshaun Elliott is a free agent. C.J. Moore is a free agent. Will Harris, who's technically not a safety anymore, um, or he is a safety now, um, and it's it's Mif- Malif Anu that is not a safety anymore. Um, but there, he's free agent too. So you've got to replace defensive backs. John Johnson the third is a third round draft pick find by Brad Holmes back in 2017. He was Will Harris's predecessor in the same role at Boston College Mm -hmm. uh, before Will Harris was there. In fact, I think they played a year together where they were the safety tandem. J.J. Three is a hell of a lot better, um, or I should say was a hell of a lot better in Los Angeles. Um, Three of his four years there, he scored over 80 on PFF overall, and it, it, it passed the eye test, it passed the sniff test. He went to Cleveland, and it did not. Work. He's had two and terrible years. He's had two terrible. He years. has. I don't, yes, I don't want to say terrible. Um, Maybe that's overstating. But he's had two bad. So years. I would say his PFF grades are not indicative of how poorly he played in Cleveland. Um, like, like if you want to say that they were fluffed up when he was good, but they were also fluffed up a little bit when he was bad because he's he was rough, man. Now some of that is the fact that they didn't find a home for him. He is not a single high safety. That's not where you play him. Uh, He is a box safety. He is a slot corner safety. He is a, um, he can play the the safety as linebacker role that a lot of teams are carving out. He can play some some split safety uh, and and did that fairly successfully in Cleveland when he was successful. That's, That's where he was good at. Look, the Browns were a poorly coached mess on defense each of the last two seasons. That's why they fired their coordinator. That's why Joe Woods is out of a job. He did not have a stable cast around him. The the Browns have a phenomenal cast of cornerbacks. Their linebackers, not so much, and they're always injured. They're always rotating guys in and out. Their defensive tackles, um, (laughs) again, I don't want to be hyperbolic, but (laughs) I'm not sure that their number one defensive tackle plays in Detroit last year like they're rough man like Taven Bryan um Jordan Elliott like these guys are not NFL talents they're just not so he he hasn't had a lot to work with and he now the things that he can control missed tackles he missed a crap ton of tackles and that's on him so maybe he just doesn't like playing when there's no hope maybe he just wasn't a fit in Cleveland maybe he doesn't like playing on grass I don't know but it did not work for him. And it was a very expensive swing and miss by the Browns. Now you get a chance to get a guy who's coming off this, who has something to prove like, yeah, man, like that was Cleveland's Well, that wasn't me. Uh, and I like that a lot. Uh, I like that attitude a lot. Cause this is a guy who is a very good leader in Los Angeles with the Rams. He, they, they clearly, Brad and Ray know, Ray Agnew know him. Uh, Jared Goff knows him pretty well. He can be a real asset. And, uh, I think the way that he finished in Cleveland, the price will be palatable for Detroit. And I hope that they go after him. I really do. Yeah. There you go. And that is your JJ three update, former Rams player whose name starts with J. I'm sorry to tease you folks like that. The Uh, other uh, one, I wouldn't, (laughs) I would not. uh, It's, it's It's, say the number, uh, say the number is it's not, it's not worth discussing. Just say the put number. it that way. Say the it, what, the, if you want to give a 28 year old cornerback $75 million guaranteed, 
more power to you. I ain't doing that. And Brad Holmes ain't doing that either. <laughs> Especially a guy that every time he gets a contract, wants a new one well before, you know, he's, he's, he's into it. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm that, that number is, is obviously unofficial, but it has been floated out there. Mm-hmm. Let's just put it that way. All right. Now uh, let's get into the next one. This one's a big one. Uh, really kind of breaking here, and it's the talk of the town. I'm certain there in Indy, it has been in the Slack and, and all oh, over God. the place. Jalen Carter's <laughs> draft stock is plummeting, and I wanted to get a uh, the big like downward trend. Oh, I guess I have to go this way. <laughs> Chart like like. <laughs> uh, wow, man! This 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 the news breaking here today. The information that's come out. I've heard there is a video. I've heard there's not a video. I've heard, well, he said he was there uh, after saying he wasn't there. There's a lot going on. Riz, we can yeah. get into it all we want, but what I think this does, and, and Ash, I think, probably said it best, this guy doesn't get drafted. If the, With this hanging over his head, the, he just, so- I just don't see him getting drafted because, look, if he gets, if he, he, he please, cool, Maybe there's no plea available. Who knows? But if he get if he goes to trial and gets convicted, it's a minimum three year jail sentence. I don't know that you put yes. any draft capital on that. I just don't know who does. There's there's a whole lot of variables that are going on. We don't know the facts yet, uh, and like we so we got we got every rumor under the sun here. So this happened, like it broke. So he was so he was scheduled to be on the podium at eleven, I think. Or sometime right around, around there. there, right around there. Yeah. So, so it, it's like ten forty, and people are starting to gather, and and we had just started to get word of this here at about ten fifteen. So everybody's like, oh, oh, we got to get. So there is a massive, like I've never seen that many people in front of a podium except for Tim Tebow here, <laughs> and like everybody's like, oh, and, and so it later came out that he hasn't, he's not here and hasn't been here all day. Um, although the NFL did try to say that he he was still getting his medical examinations. Uh, that's been proven false. Uh, that's that's about the only fact that we actually know was yeah. that he was gone by then. Um, so I don't, said, I'm not sure why the NFL was was carrying that water, but okay. th- well, because we, <laughs> look, we see it in the Snyder reporting that the NFL carries all kinds of BS water. But the fact that oh, he was yeah. like, oh, he's in his medical, and then he's not even. Uh, it's like, oh, come on, guys. That's this. That only yeah. makes it worse. So it literally, only makes yeah, it worse. So, so and and so Carter has come out and said that he's going to you know cooperate and go back and and take care of business and will be exonerated and for his sake I hope so yeah absolutely uh, but but from from a draft standpoint and, and that's where we'll keep it here he's this is worse than um, uh, Larry Tunsil with the pot with the gas this mask. is worse than yes. That's Obviously, how we're opening this year's draft party, you guys. Just so you know, get ready. It's going to be a heck of a show. There, I can't recall a time where a play a player would be involved in the death of two people. With obviously, he didn't kill them on purpose. Um, if he was in fact involved at all, but somewhat culpable for two people losing their life. Um, the most analogous situation to it from what we can gather here, and again, I don't know what's fact, I don't know what's fiction, I'll just I'll just go off of what what's being spewed out there. It's Henry Ruggs and what happened to him in Las Vegas. And that was a career ender. Um now obviously there's there's a lot more that goes on with that, but that's where do you draft that? Uh do you draft that if you're if you're the Chicago Bears? Uh, who last year took their GM as a rookie, took a whole lot of grief for signing a lot of dudes that had some problems off the field? I don't think so. Well, uh, and, and let's, are, let's be before this, like his his rate of sacks and so on. I mean, people, there was all kinds of, I don't want to say questions, but is he really that high on the board? Is he a product of what's around him as much as it's him? Um, Boy. Yeah. There was a lot of questions. So it was like, yeah, he might, he could go early. He could go, you know, top four, whatever. That's kind of the consensus. But eh, maybe, maybe. And there's a lot of talk that he couldn't and things switch and move and change. I mean, we're still pretty early. The combine hadn't happened. I mean, now you're not going to see him at the combine. I think that hurts him 
I, I think I think that hurts him with definitely. This this, this is yeah. a guy who needed to work out. He needed to show yeah. that he could work out. Yeah. Um, and, I, and actually, I think I think he was going to not work out anyways, um, at which you know I think is a poor move on his part. Um, but it's it's really hard to know where every individual NFL team would be if he's. So this will not be adjudicated before the draft. This is part of the problem that you have. Even a plea deal, like they're not getting that done in seven weeks. Just the the wheels of justice don't spin that quickly. Uh, it just and doesn't work that way. And it's so you're gonna how, you're gonna want to invest. Fans, I'm sorry, just really quick. As football fans, people yeah. want it to go faster so we can find out and know for the draft. Whereas anytime you would have any kind of allowance in the justice system for the guy they don't like right this is it's 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 yeah. kind of this goes to that question of the week right the whole idea of what would it take for you to stop watching the nfl like if, if i don't know if the line if the nfl covered for this guy and he caused the wreck and it comes out in three years would that be it like they covered for a murderer is that enough to get you something? question of the week hit hashtag dlp on twitter <laughs> hit, it, hit it in the uh in the comments go ahead sir you know we were talking about Ray Lewis. That's, did I say that out loud? He's here too. I better punch myself. Yeah, is um, in the room. Blink twice. Blink SOS if he's in the room. <laughs> he, no, I, I did actually see him. Uh, not, I didn't. Not no. I didn't see him. I know he's here. Yep. That way. Um, so, um, so with Carter. If this is not adjudicated, if these charges are still hanging out there and it's draft weekend, do I think that the Detroit Lions take him at six? No, I don't. Do I think that a lot of other teams would make the same decision? Yes, I do. I don't think there are many teams, I won't speak for them all, but I don't think that they would take him. There's too much risk there. Uh, and, and like, look, we, we'll go back to Cleveland for a second. The Browns took such a massive local PR hit that they're not recovering from nearly as quickly as they expected in taking on Deshaun and all that's going on with him. And Deshaun, as reprehensible as his allegations against him are, didn't kill anybody, um, intentional or not. Really quick question. Where's Cleveland drafting again? (laughs) I just want to see where Carter might go. (laughs) 40. Might as well double down. Yeah, they're... (laughs) They're what forty three? Yeah, their first pick, the Texans own at twelve, and uh, uh, look for that to be a wide receiver. Look for that to be the first wide receiver. A little dust there. <laughs> their first one will be a quarterback, and who's going to get measured very prominently very soon. Well, we'll talk. About the way we are actually, <laughs> we are actually having prop bets amongst ourselves in, in the group of the media on the exact dimensions that Bryce Young will weigh and measure in that. And it's fun. <laughs> because we we have in that group is somebody who has covered him at Alabama and has stated um, with video evidence that he knows exactly how much he played at. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're, we're going to see how that comes out. He gets weighed on Friday? I don't know. I can't keep track of the the full days tomorrow. Oh, so tomorrow morning we get is interviews. We get cornerbacks and safeties, which will be fun. By the way, I'm transcribing Christian Gonzalez's um, uh, interview, so which means I get to sit with him and, and talk to him the whole time. So that's gonna be fun. Uh, I'll Send it to me. I'll have ask back to several in like questions. Twenty minutes. Okay. Yeah, so I'll have it transcribed in yeah. twenty minutes for you. Send it to me. I'll get it. Uh, so I I've gotten better at it. I've I actually done. I did two today. Um, one of them, the guy only got four questions, which was nice because I could pretend that nobody knows. That's how it's we fun. have eighteen languages up on the for folks, both including English for those who are like to watch another language or have the transcription in English because of uh, whatever reasons we have that yeah. available for you. In 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 yeah. literally within I think it's about forty minutes after the broadcast across the board. I can handle. But I can that's, handle English. That's impressive, flat, brother. I can do English and nothing flat. That, that is impressive. I will say I, I learned yesterday that the voice recorder function on my Android has a talk to text feature. Yeah. Um, and that's it's not accurate, but it's better than nothing that gets you a start anyways. <laughs> you it's easier handy. to go through and edit words out or change like pronunciations or spellings um, than to just type the entire thing out. I, you should see my Hindi handwriting. Uh, it's, it's top shelf. 
Korean. I got the Cyrillic languages. I got it all, brother. <laughs> all right. Anyway. If you can write in Cyrillic, more power to you. <laughs> So yeah, the, the long and the short of it with Jalen Carter is is that it's very unknown. I there will be pressure even if he's cleared from certain people, certain fans, certain media that will say you can't take this guy, um, or I don't want you to take this guy, and different teams will respond differently to that pressure. And I I couldn't tell you where the lines are at with it, but I will just say that. I would be surprised if it's still pending on April, was it 28th, April 27th, whenever the first day of the draft is. Mm-hmm. If it's still pending, it would be stunning to me if the Lions drafted him because that's just too much of an unknown variable. That I, I, it, could I don't, go, it could go horribly wrong. He had something in September. I just don't think that the Lions are going for him. I don't. And the, the character is a big thing. And I think this is something that's just going to be in the way. There's other players that they'll, they'll look at, and I think they'll find that they're, they'll feel their value is is gained without risk somewhere else. He right. may be a great player, but you've got a pattern of risk, and I don't think that the Lions are, are willing to take those kinds of risks that you spend that money. They did it with Anzarike, and, and I don't think they want to do it with, with injuries. I don't think they want to do it with, with anything anymore because they recognize the value they're building through the draft. This is, this is a, there's, there's the drop off in talent from him to somebody else they could get at six is small enough that it isn't worth the risk, I think is where I would put the calculus on that. I would I would I would concur with that assessment. Yeah. All right. Um, so there it is. Big news on Jalen Carter today. A lot of people talking about it. It's so unfortunate for everybody. I mean for- it was it was a bomb dropped here. Like it yeah. was great. It was all anybody could talk about for a couple of hours here. And it's uh again it's it's tough because you don't know the facts. You don't know what happened. Um, and the problem is, is that we're not going to get resolution on it fast enough for the draft for him for it to matter. And that's, uh, I got to get to a mock draft. I don't know where they'll put him. No. <laughs> I don't know what to do. No. <laughs> I did, just thought of that. Um, by the way, I did write something, my thoughts on it, a little bit deeper thoughts on the, how it impacts the draft at real GM football, real GM.com. Check that out. Uh, yeah. If you care more about my thoughts on Jalen Carter. There you go. All right. I have to apologize for my early failures with the, uh, the, the, the thing at the bottom talking about the topics. I was, <laughs> I forgot about it. I was just, it's the only second time we're using it. I'm a little slow. So I apologize. <laughs> for doing that. All right. Let's talk about uh, Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell. They were at the, uh, at the, at the, um, the podium today, I don't know why I couldn't think of the word podium. Uh, it wasn't a dais. And so they stood up there, had a, had some good interviews, had some good questions. Um, the talk of the town, I think the biggest news of the day between Brad and Coach Campbell is the hoodie that uh, Campbell the was wearing. <laughs> it was pretty hot, dude. That was pretty smoking hot. Uh, yeah, Brad Holmes had it rocking, man. Uh, and so he actually had a couple of people come up to him after his press conference and ask him where he got it. <laughs> did, and I didn't did, hear the did answer, you, by the way, either. I wasn't not. within earshot. So. Of course not. Sorry. Darn it. I missed it. Darn it. All right. I've, uh, I want to get, I want to get something really quick. Cause I want to make sure I, I get this, get this one handled. Um, yeah. Okay, well, we'll get to that in a second. So, yeah, that was great. What uh, what do you want to hit from? Oh, here it is. Go to liveafreshlife.com. Liveafreshlife.com. Yes. You know what that is? That's Q. That's, the Q is a That's hell of a Q. store there. Uh, I, his hoodies are, are fire. Uh, I love the I love that, like, stuff. that grayish, brownish, suede one. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. I got one. I, I got can't even describe up. the color. I got one lined up coming my way. I can't wait. I love it. It's good stuff. Really, really good stuff. Um, and it's got the Gen Z, the Zoomer stamp of approval, too. It's not just the Boomer. It's got the Zoomers. So check it out. Uh, go ahead up to liveafreshlife.com and get your stuff. It's the only place you want to go for the baddest hoodies. And they got, I mean, they got T-shirts, the whole thing. Great, great stuff there. Um, all right. Let's talk about what else went Thank on in the Combine. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. Um, so we got Brad and Dan we were the only people being at podiums, um, after three o'clock today. <laughs> Thankfully, Brad came out five minutes early. We were all grateful for that. Uh, he talked about a lot of things, basically talked, um, 
about, I'm trying to, I'm looking at my notes here because I have it. Um, positional value. Um, the, the, the biggest concept that I got, and again, I'm going to have to paraphrase here because his stuff's all on my phone here um, and I haven't transcribed it yet. And uh, I'll, I'll get to that at some point. I have to eat at some point too. <laughs> but uh, I will. Uh, so he talked about the, that they wouldn't necessarily look past talent at a position where they might already seem like they're set. And this is where the edge talk comes in. Uh, and, and I will say, I still do not think they're looking at an edge early. Um, there are people that will disagree with me that are here that will disagree with me on that. And we will find that out. But Dan's, or I'm sorry, Brad's statement today certainly gives a lot of weight to the people that are arguing against me that they will like, and the, the obvious case is Will Anderson. Like if Will Anderson's there at six, you take Will Anderson. I, I don't, I don't have a problem with that at all either. I think he's great. Uh, well, yeah. he, I, I think he's a little overhyped, honestly, but he's a really, leader. really good player. He, he's going to help your secondary. <laughs> he would yeah, he would um and 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 so then dan talked about how do you like we'll find a way to get all these talented guys on the field we'll figure that out that's what coaches do um again paraphrasing and i i like that answer um but the the other one the other big there were two other big things that dan hit or brad hit Sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> One of them was the backup quarterback. And this is where Brad, yes, Brad, acknowledged that he didn't do a very good job last year. He's like, I got to do better at, at planning and addressing what's going on behind Jared. Uh, and Dave Burkett was standing right in front of me, and he tried to get him to bite. And Brad dodged it very nicely, whether they were drafted quarterback in the first round or not, which, of course, you know, he's good at that. Um. That and I thought that I thought I actually thought that Brad's answer was pretty good, um, and it did read as a goodbye note to Nate Sudfeld that it doesn't sound like they have any interest in bringing him back. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see. So most of the people that I have spoken with down here, and I put myself into this camp as well, think that they're signing a free agent of some value and drafting a quarterback. But again, where do they draft it? Don't know. This is, what I said. this is what I said ages ago. They're going to get a free agent and they're going to, you heard him. I think he gave it away when he said they're going to get a developmental guy. You don't draft a developmental guy at number six. You just don't. I mean, that's not what no, that don't. guy is. No. Um, it's a free agent and well, you and, can and draft CJ like Stroud at six. CJ Stroud is a developmental. That's, and that there and lies the problem that they're clearly committed to, to Jared Goff. After what mm -hmm. Dan said earlier in the day to Peter Schrager, <laughs> there, the, I actually think that this was a thing where they might almost be opening up contract negotiations with Jared Goff this offseason. And I didn't think that that was possible before. And now I'm more inclined to believe that they might do that. And I'm that's telling surprising you, to me because Goff, that's. I think people are missing it. I really do. And I know you and I disagree. And I know he's had, you know, the last couple of years were bad in L.A. They weren't great. I know his first year here wasn't great. But we also know that the talent that he was surrounded with was, I, I guess, I think the word, the technical word is ass. I mean, there was not talent there. I mean, Stafford well, would have had They made the Super year. Bowl. No, no, no. I'm talking about You're the talking Lions. You're talking about the Rams. The Rams made the, the Super Bowl. Hold hold up. Up. Yeah, they made, it, they made it two years oh. ago, too. Um, so the, the first year here is what I'm talking about. And and there just wasn't ass is the technical term for the talent that was surrounding Jared Goff this year. Jared Goff had a hell of a year. People forget the first six games, only two of them, the offense stumbled. We were the for the first four games of the season, we were the top offense in the league. It wasn't a quarterback problem that stopped us from the playoffs or that made that that, that prevented us from winning those games. You put a you put a numbers twenty defense. On this Lions team, and I, and especially the way the Niners played that first week in the playoffs, we make week two with 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 him. I, I really believe we yeah. do. I think Sean McVay had a lot to do with Jared Goff's demise in L.A. I really, really believe that. I think we're going to hear and learn a lot about Sean McVay and what goes on in L.A. and his teams. Not that it's a bad thing, but how he runs his players, and I, I think he runs them. 
And um, it is what it is, right? I mean, you talk about there's people and they're starting to come out a little bit now that they're not winning as much in in, uh, in New England about, I don't know that I'd want to play there. It's, uh, you know, that culture, that thing. There, there's, there's a thing. There's a thing. And I just really think that they truly, for better or for worse, they truly believe that the good golf is the golf that they're going to continue to get because they've unlocked the key to good good golf, and they're not going to drive him and do to him what McVeigh did. They also, from a confidence standpoint, the other place where golf has, I think, what could potentially be a weakness is his own, you know, getting in his head when things are in his head. I think they've kind of un- unlocked the cheat code on that too. I really think they have, and they and the fact that they're making the vote for him in the way they have and putting themselves behind him the way they have. I just think that they truly believe that he's the guy, and and and, and, I, and I know people disagree, oh, but I think you can win with golf. That they think that, yeah, yeah. I think you can yeah, win with him, know. but you need a lot of stuff around him. Bad quarterbacks have won Super Bowls. He's not a bad quarterback. I mean, if you look not at in a long this year, time, he was number it's been nine. a long time since a bad quarterback won a Super Bowl. It's because Tom Brady. I mean, the, he he's won and been to so well, many and done so much to wreck the numbers on that in the last decade. With crap decade teams around him, he, he has some ass teams in New England around him. Like you, yeah, and that's where we some... defer is that because I want a quarterback who doesn't need that. I want a quarterback who can be why you win instead of part of that. why you win. We had that in Matthew Stafford. I'm willing to try something a little different at this point. <laughs> I I would want to aim higher than golf, but they're they're clearly not doing that, and that's uh, yep. we'll see how that was. We'll see how that goes. For yeah, them. yeah, no, no, no. Uh, this is this is the, watching this play out is going to be super super interesting. It really really is. I will say if you if you, I will just I'll make the same statement again. If you have confidence that Jared Goff can be the Jared Goff of the last ten weeks with no Ben Johnson on this team, that's a leap I will not but make. But you have I Ben Johnson. Cannot do that. For a year, you, you have Ben Johnson though. For a year, at least maybe. Uh, I wouldn't count on more than a year. Oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <sighs> uh, and the other thing is, is then you're gonna have to pay him, and then that, that we talked about that last week. We won't yeah, that it, well, it depends. But, it depends so, what you pay him. So we can we can go on from there. I mean, there's yeah, a lot of golf um, talk to yeah. happen. We can probably save some of this for June, but he'll probably have it yeah, by yeah, him. certainly. Um, but so. <laughs> Let, let's let's look at the quarterbacks real quick, and, and these none of these guys were mentioned by name by Brad or Dan today. Anthony Richardson is, I will say that I would be surprised if he's there at six. So this this whole argument about him is probably moot. Uh, he, all the buzz and all the like, the connected people and the tape people are all like he's going before Levis. And that surprises me because I thought Will Levis was going to be quarterback two. Um, and I looked I'm probably going to take the L on that, although that was obviously early. But if there's three quarterbacks that are taken before Detroit, and I think that's that's probably a safe bet, especially with the way that Carter's ambiguity is now, uh, Richards is going to be one of them. And it might not be the teams that are there now, uh, but uh, – uh, so I, I think that's a that's a conversation that's probably we're going to look at this in a couple months and be like, why the hell did we spend so much time on Anthony Richardson? Because he was never going to be there at six to begin with. Um, and I think that's probably where we're at. So then you got to look at the next crop of quarterbacks. And the one that fits, and I heard this name a lot last night, was Ended Hooker. There you uh, go. At, with, with the Vikings, specifically with the Vikings pick in the second round, they think that they – I'll say they, um, <laughs> uh, not the lions, not, not, not the lions. They think that that's about the range where he's going to go. Uh, that he's probably not going to be there later, much later than that. And he actually could go earlier than that. Uh, and by the way, I heard from one draft analyst that you would know from TV who said last night, uh, off the record that if I didn't hooker was healthy, he would be graded higher than Will Levis. And that's, if you can get that guy at 55, yeah, 55, right? Yeah. 55? Mm-hmm. You take him. Yeah. I don't care that he's 25 years old and mm. won't play next year. Because yeah. the Lions don't need him next year. They're going to they're gonna sign 
Andy Dalton, Cooper Rush, Drew Locke, Gardner Minshew, one of those, some of the, one of those backup people that can come in and and not screw the pooch. His and, his, his and, age and have that take over in a year. Hendon Hooker's a guy you could probably get thirteen years out of if he if he played a long career and if he was good enough, right? If he's that good, he can play till about probably thirty eight. So you get this guy, right? I think. And we talked about this a little beforehand. I think the NFL is changing. I think Justin Fields kind of, and and um, Lamar in, uh, in 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 Baltimore. I think I think you're starting to see that putting these super high value, both cost in salary and in draft capital assets, running around. And getting hit. The, every, remember, they used to count hits on quarterbacks when they used to be pocket passers, right? And now they're going out and getting hit at speed. And you're seeing these injuries. You saw Justin Fields last year. At the end of the year, he was a physical wreck. I mean, he, he was, was beat to hell. Give him four years. Why, why, is, why is Lamar on the way out from Baltimore? Because they thought he could play and he was too hurt to play. And That's, and you, that's, that's the basic crux of their, their luggerheads right now. You start paying that kind of money, you don't want them to take those kind of hits. We talked about like the lighter, faster defensive players. This gives you all kinds of options for big tight ends and different, you know, different types of players to to play against that. I I think the league, not next year, not this year, but I think the league over the course of up to the next five years is going to start moving away from putting their cornerbacks in harm's like you can't block for them. How does an O line work? with a quarterback that keeps, you know, that could run, they couldn't block for Barry Sanders, you know, right? I think about, I kind of think about it in that context. Yeah. If you don't know where this guy is going to go, how the hell he's going to take hits, he's going to get hit. And you don't want that high value, high cost guy taking hits. I don't care if he's six, four, I don't care. That's, that's why they also have to be able to throw. And that's where Mahomes, that's where Burrow, yeah. that's where Hertz comes in but as he, a, as a group that can, that can do that. Justin Herbert fits into that. That guy, that guy's a phenomenal athlete too. He can run, yeah, and he can also throw very well. He and had, I think what was that it, broken that, ribs that, that, <laughs> at the beginning. That, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and if Mahomes redux. had a play right after that game, that you know what I mean, at the, the Super Bowl a week earlier with, that with ankle the high ankle sprain, a big problem. Yeah. I mean, these things. It's like, yep, he got through yeah. it. But do you want to risk it all on that? Because you are, you're risking it all in that situation. I just think they're going to get away from it. Yeah. But at the same time, Jared Goff could get clobbered and, and be out for X amount of time too, sitting in the pocket. Like that happens too. Um, yeah. Not as, not as frequently, but it, it happens. I mean, <laughs> Baker Mayfield got his shoulder separated, trying to scramble out of the pocket. Um, he was still inside the tackle box when that happened. Like that, that stuff happens too. And uh, you know, that's, that's where they need the insurance. That's to what Brad was talking about today. He's got to do a better job. And he acknowledged it. At, at planning for the quarterbacks behind Jared. And I think that's one of the big takeaways was they're going to invest a lot more in the backup quarterback, uh, both free agency and I do think that they're taking a draft pick. I don't know, but I don't know if they're interested. As I've said uh, in the Slack, I think I said it on the show last week, they have spent an inordinate amount of resources scouting this quarterback class from top to bottom. I don't know how they feel about any of the specific quarterbacks. I'd say that truthfully. I really don't know, but they have spent so much time on it that it would be very surprising if they don't draft one. Yeah. Um, and, and if it if they don't draft one, it's because they're really down on the class as a whole. Guys like Jaron Hall, uh, Jake Hayner, uh, Aiden O'Connell from Purdue is a name that would probably need to scout a little bit more because they did. Uh, th- 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 those that. That ilk of quarterback that's going in the fourth, fifth, sixth round this year, they spent a lot of time on those dudes too. Uh, and that's – Chris, I think that's probably where you project that they would be taking a quarterback, where they would have some interest in taking a quarterback. Sorry, I was producing when he asked the question. I heard everything up until it. Can you hit the question again? I'm so sorry. So, uh, the, like the fourth, fifth – sixth round area mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, is where you would project them to take a quarterback, uh, uh, whoever it might be, whether it's Hayner or Hall or O'Connell or I don't or think even, they're interested in Malik Cunningham. But, I would but. even th- look at Hooker earlier, to be honest with you. I think he yeah. could fall He could fall in a spot where, where they actually grab him. I don't think first round, right, obviously. But I, I think that's a guy that I, I would actually – 
I would think that they have their eyes on because he fits. I mean, he's all, I don't want to say he's plug and play, but he's almost plug and play. You don't have to change a whole lot with the golf, with the golf. The, the things if you that, put hooker in there, <laughs> the things that Ben Johnson asked Jared Goff to do and hooker can do. He can, he can make those throws. Yep. He's probably not quite as accurate on the shorter throws, mm -hmm. but he's more accurate in the deep, like those, those long passes that Goff and shark just couldn't hook up on. Yep. Yep. And Hooker hits those with his sleep. Yeah. And yeah, that's exactly. uh yeah, and so. that then gives you an option again if the if the negotiations just go wrong with Goff, which is potential, right? There's always that potential until he's signed. Mm -hmm. You have a viable, I mean, at that point you give Hooker his chance, but he's truly becomes your bridge, right? I mean, he, he truly becomes your bridge till and and again, you can put all this capital. You know what else he is, Chris? In, He's leverage. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and 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 you can put let's let's just I'm just gonna throw this out here as a silly example, but but in 2025 you can take every single one of your draft picks and draft the number one overall pick if you want to to get your quarterback because you've built the rest of your team. I mean, it's very San Francisco, right? And I've been kind of kind of looking at that. Then if you put Jared Goff on San Francisco, they win the Super Bowl. You put, you know, any if they could maybe protect him, right? I mean, right. they are lacking that one piece. And that's why I know everyone's screaming about Goff, but they've been able to put everything else in place. And then I can see, you know, especially you're in a position there where then you're plugging and playing as a contract goes and you can't afford them, but you can continue just to roll and draft your quarterback until I'm I, now just for people that are out there. I think some people are going to say he should trade everything, every single pick. It's not what I actually said. I was just making a, a rhetorical statement to so say you could trade anything. Let's you go to, to what, the guy you want. Let's go to how the Rams got Jared Goff. They were picking 15th that year. They traded a one, a two, a four, and next year's one and three. Yep, yep. And got the one from 15. They, I think they got back a fourth um, that they traded away for a guy who couldn't play at all, too. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it can be done. Uh, but what Mahomes was, the Chiefs were 27 and moved to 10. I think. Yeah, I but they, they were trying to get Trubisky, but they, he got gobbled up, so they settled for Mahomes. <laughs> Sorry. Do you, can I ask something? I mean, I, this is, I know this is a silly yeah. question, but this is a silly team that I'm talking about. Do you think that the Chicago Bears front office is actually high enough to try to grab a quarterback this year? 100% no. Okay. Okay. I, no. I didn't think so. No. Like I said, I know it's a silly question, no. but right. But they've made so, some so real the, buffoonery style moves before, and so oh. the conversations that we have down here. So everybody, and I've been asked a lot, is and I'll say it in the in the tone that it's asked me. The Lions aren't really that in on Jared Goff, are they? Are they really? <laughs> like. So the Chicago people get the question, they're not really trading just Justin Fields, are they? Are they? Like, it's the same tone. Um, and uh, your response to that golf thing would be their response to the Fields thing. He ain't going nowhere. They, yeah. they, they love him enough that he's, they're, they're ready to build around him. And, and just, if you go back and read the, the pre-draft reports from a lot of people that are ripping Fields now, they like feels more than they like any of the guys in this draft. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's weird to see that change, but, and maybe, maybe that's a guide on, on why you, you know, I only ask, right? Because the level of buffoonery can almost not be understated historically in Chicago. And I just needed a sanity check there. Like I said, I didn't think this was the They're case. They're not. But I just wanted to make sure it's it, it is truly outside of the realm of a so Bears the type move. The, <laughs> the argument that gets presented is is that they've already burned two years of their window with Fields, mm -hmm. and they're they're the worst team in football. Like there's time they, to get a new window. <laughs> yeah, exactly. the The problem is is that if you do that, like. Who's going to want to open that window? Who's going to want to be part of that window? Who's going to want to crawl through that window? But it's like, leverage, Riz. It's leverage. <laughs> yeah. 
So I, oh man, it's amazing. I will say that more people than more people than don't expect that pick to be traded. Like, yeah, that, absolutely. Whether it's the Colts or the Panthers, um, those are the two most likely candidates moving up to get it. There are some people who are one one person in particular uh, who thinks that Seattle is going up to get it to get um, not Bryce Young. <laughs> to get C.J. Stroud, uh, which is an interesting conversation in and of itself. Um, it's, uh, I think they're going to, I think they're going to find success in trading number one. And I don't think it will be the Detroit Lions moving up there, giving them six and 18 to do it. No. That's, you You will probably see that floated out there. Uh, I don't put any stock into that, but. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Weird things happen. People trade up for, for Mitch Trubisky and his lifetime supply of Axe body spray that he blew his signing bonus on doing knuckle push-ups to make himself look swole before his combine podium interview. Okay. So that was, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to scribble out Stetson Bennett to Chicago at one. Fine. You got me. All right. Uh, <laughs> probably on. scribble him out to Detroit anywhere too. <laughs> uh, he's a, so aside from the fact that he's not got the grit, um, he's older than Hendon Hooker. And he's got some off-field issues. He's tiny, and he does not do the things that Jared Goff does well. Well, didn't he decide not to? He decided to do something other than go to the combine, didn't he? Or other than go to Senior Bowl, didn't he? He he got arrested. Yeah, that's what he decided to <laughs> for do for drinking with his boys. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's a Georgia thing allegedly. Okay, let's move on. Uh, we want to get to the next topic: combine schedule. Get your remote ready. I know mine will be on. I'll be tuning in hard um, and pushing the buttons pretty severely on my remote while I do it. Um, just to talk about what's going on. March second, you have defensive linemen and linebackers. Uh, March third, that's defensive- tomorrow. Yeah. No, the second is March 3rd, defensive backs, kickers, and special teams. Uh, March 4th, quarterbacks, wide receivers, and tight ends. And March 5th, offensive linemen and running backs. Tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday, the 3rd, is 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. Okay, NFL Network or NFL Plus. Oh, thank God they're not doing it at night. (laughs) Yeah, no doubt. At midnight, they're doing wide receivers. What a Dumb bunch of idiots they were. Okay, so uh, three to eight on Thursday and Friday. So you're if you're one of those work from home folks, you can throw it up on the TV, you can throw it on your computer if you get that opportunity. I don't know that the radio is great for the combine, so you're kind of where you are on that. Um, even Dan Miller, I don't know that he could make the combine. <laughs> what it needs to be. Uh, March fourth and fifth, so Saturday and Sunday, it's one p.m. to eight p.m. on Saturday and 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. Get your drink on those nights because you can come up, wake up a little early, and uh, get your your remote tuned. Um, I'll talk about the combine, the drills. We'll just really quick go over the the drills. Uh, 40-yard jash, I think you guys have heard of that. Um, We we always support St. Jude. If there's a spot to get a chance to throw to run rich run, please do. It's always valuable. Uh, We're still open to it, stjude.com slash DLP. You can even donate there if you wanted to. Uh, Bench press of 225 pounds. Did you hear that we raised over $100,000 for for St. Jude? Uh, Vertical jump. We've got the broad jump, three-cone drill, 20-yard shuttle, and the 60-yard shuttle. Brought to you by Amazon. Go to support the Detroit Lions podcast <laughs> when you shop at Amazon Look by going to amazon.detroitlionspodcast.com. Amazon.detroitlionspodcast.com. They give us a little kickback, costs you nothing more. Support the podcast by doing something you were going to do anyway. All right, there you go. Um, what's your favorite? I mean, the 40 is tends to be the favorite because it's the wow drill, but what's your favorite drill there is at the at the combine? Three cone. No question about it. Three cone is the best evaluator of relative athleticism, especially for bigger guys, Mm -hmm. Uh, offensive linemen, defensive linemen, pass rushers, linebackers. You don't want guys that don't do well in the three cone because that means that they can't adjust laterally. That means they're stiff. They're narrow. You don't want that in your players. Think um, like Jared Davis. (laughs) It was really good to straight line. Not so much if he had to veer in any other direction, aside from his lack of relative instincts. Uh, I, so, um, our friend, Pat Kerwin, who I saw today and talked to for a couple you, minutes, uh, has, what has was a Pat thing. In? What, what condition was he in uh, this Pat, time? Pat was working today. Pat, okay. Pat was working hard today. Okay. Um, he was working hard when we saw him too. But. Oh yeah, he was. Um, 
but he puts together the it's a combination of your what is it it's your brandon kerr knows this if you're if you're watching brandon put it in the chat because i'd want to get it it's broad jump um vertical and one other thing and they add up to a score and like it's an explosion score and if it's over one value that's what you want so i do actually look at that because pk knows what he's doing um i'm just too tired to recall the exact parameters of it right now but uh that's i do look at that i don't care much about the 40 i do care about the 10 yard split the problem is is that they're unofficial um and they often change drastically from the unofficial times that you see on tv to the official times that get logged later mm -hmm. and they that's never been accurately explained to any of us and that's kind of a, a wonder i don't know but um you know I, I i do like watching the dudes run the 40 just to, like it is fun um De De devin a chain from texas a and m can run the 100 in like like the 11th fastest time in world history. Like he, he's that fast, like massive tracks. I, I want to see that dude run. Like, yeah. And don't stop at 40. Like, just keep keep going. Just keep running. Just keep, <laughs> um, going. Yep. Just keep running. You know, uh, I do, uh, and I put this in the article that I that I wrote for Lionswire because it is something that I know that the Lions value is like the, the linebacker drills where they get up off the ground and they run one way and they run another and then they chase a mythical receiver mm -hmm. in – coverage i do watch that I, I like that stuff i don't really much care if they can catch or not that that gauntlet drill is sort of weird um wide receivers hate that by the way uh you know i, I watch that stuff but like of, of the, the the measurement drills uh three cone is the big one for me yeah yeah there you go um quick question uh from don h i'll let you think about it for a second riz do nfl teams actually use official times or do they use their own support the detroit lions podcast also by going to fanatics.detroitlionspodcast.com fanatics.detroitlionspodcast.com as you see your free agents as you see your draft picks head on over get your jerseys get your official merch i don't care if it's pistons red wings U of M, MSU, show some support for the folks at MSU. Any one of the major sports, all the merch is there. Yes. They give us a little kickback. Really, really good stuff. Fanatics.DetroitLionsPodcast.com. Thank you for letting us get those in. Uh, okay, I think the answer is both, Riz. <laughs> most, <laughs> most teams do their own. Mm -hmm. but they use The Lions do their own. Yeah. They, By the way, Dan will not be doing it. It's laser time. He, like, he doesn't like it. Right? It's laser timed, yeah. Yeah. but I think, and so I think they have differentials that way, but they also do their own. I think they, they, they use both to, to do their evaluation, but, uh, Anand comes in with the big one, Anand from the Slack. Thank you so much for being a Patreon supporter. Uh, I think Brad prefer, prefers in-game GPS speed. And I would say, absolutely. I think that 100%. is a hundred percent how he does his, his final evaluation. And that, that is being more and more widespread. That is something that a lot more teams are looking at, uh, and that is accurate. And the other thing that they can do now with with the 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 tracking is they can tell you how long they sustain that speed too, yep. and that's that's critical. And that's that that that's definitely data that is out there that the teams are using. When you're when you hear analytics being talked about in the draft process, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that, that's that's analytics right there. And this it's is not a little... it's not a Bugaboo, it's not a, a dirty word. It's, it is what it is. This alludes to what Coach Campbell was talking about today, and I will not directly, but I will paraphrase the Underwear Olympics, right? To see other oh, pajamas, yep. to see these guys out there in their pajamas. It's interesting. It's, it's, it's good. You can still do relative scores from one guy to the next, but it really isn't game speed. So you really, you know, the film is where it's at and how they've played. We talked about that, like the senior bowl was the last chance to really see these guys play because they're now in shape for a track meet and they've been working to be in shape right. for a track meet. And now after this is over, they're getting in shape for pro days and then they're going to be in shape for football as they get closer towards football season. But this whole thing takes them into a different kind of body makeup than when they play ball. Yeah, and so one of the things that so we'll go back to Bryce Young very quickly. Mm -hmm. We're all expecting him to come in at two hundred or perhaps a little bit more than that. He is not working out. He's not doing anything. He's not throwing. He's not doing any of the the testing at all. He will do that at Alabama's pro day, where it is incredibly scripted for him. Um, I will say, pro days like 
you're not going to see a lot of teams sending multiple people to pro days anymore. They have mm-hmm. jumped the shark. Yep. Uh, but uh, <laughs> the the difference between, like you just talked about, Chris, between being in playing shape and track workout shape is very different. And the teams know that. Which I think is why the the NFL is going to want to turn this into more of a fan event than a team event, right? Which means that's how you, you which don't means have access that to the fewer teams, teams will yeah. be involved. Yep. And it like right now, the, the Packers and Rams, they're not here. <laughs> they're not here. <laughs> so uh, it, it's it's already happening a little bit, and like the we'll find out tomorrow when I'm over in Lucas Oil Stadium, which is like. Right there, um, on the other side of on this side of the wall, um, uh, and we do get we, media does get to go in and watch this year, and I will go in and watch. Uh, but there has been less and less people in the stands, team personnel doing this stuff, sitting with the timers, you know, at the edge of the, like. John Dorsey still does it, um, but not a lot of teams do as much with it as they used to. I said in the Slack after watching what he did to, to Sandman, Dorsey's got a better stiff arm than Derrick Henry, man. <laughs> no one talks to that man unless he wants him to. Did him cold. <laughs> Dorsey is here, by the way. Was wearing his white sweatshirt. Of course. <laughs> All right. Uh, last somebody, one. somebody from Cleveland asked a player that today. Like, did you meet John Dorsey? Was he wearing the white sweatshirt? Yeah. <laughs> the player was like, "What?" <laughs> I obviously didn't know. <laughs> what to look for at the 2023 scouting combine? Uh, I just want to really clearly let. You know, we character and background, absolutely. But don't think it's getting the door for the little old lady or helping someone across the street. Character is about um, more than not what? driving what? drunk or crashing a car. Character for them is, I mean, I'll, I'll sum it up in their word, grit. The ability to be coached, yes. that desire to, and love of the game of football, that desire to be the very, very best you can. You'll, you, that'll, that'll, that'll beat two-tenths on the 40. That'll beat scores on the three cone that will get a position yeah. for you. And that translates to a guy like Amon Ra, the guy you see on the field, the guy like Rodriguez people, nobody saw or weren't grabbing at or weren't looking at that, uh, that uh, Brad can pick out because they're the right makeup and he knew, and he gets continually is able to find these guys because of their character. And it doesn't mean helping the old lady across the street. So when you hear character, think about not that, if you push some old lady into the street, they would, they would want them. That is the, the, the minimum bar, not. right? They're not doing that, but yeah. character is beyond just being a nice guy and not getting into legal trouble. I just want to clarify that. Yeah. Anything else to look uh, for? Football, the combine, foot, foot, football character is very important. Brad, uh, Dan, Dan said today that they've interviewed 30 to 35 people and he's put check marks by four as meeting the criteria to be lions. Um, yeah. I will add parenthetically, the offensive linemen aren't here yet interviewing. So it's been primarily defensive backs and linebackers who have been doing the, the interviews, not exclusively, but primarily those are the play, those are the player groups that have gone through so far. There's there's uh, and, and it's it's football character. Um and I will say I will trumpet a guy because I read about it at Lionswear today. Keanu Benton, defensive tackle Wisconsin, said the word grit several times. In his press conference, don't think the Lions don't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> and he fit. He fit. He was great in Mobile. He would. He would yeah, be very, yeah. very nice playing next to Aleem. If you're, if Jalen Carter is not an option, Keanu Benton at fifty-five or whenever they pick in the third round, sign me up, baby. Mm. I like it. I'm, I'm smelling a guard in the third. Options. Um. <laughs> all right. With that, um, let's get to. Last bit of it. Okay. I like my boy Nick Brooker. I like I like him from, from Ole Miss. I like that guy. Oh yeah. Patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast. Don't forget us about us there. Get access for as little as five dollars a month to the Slack. If you join as a member on the YouTube, you also get access to the Slack. You just email me your uh, uh, screenshot that you joined, and we'll get you in there. Slack is the most intelligent Lions chat on the internet. It gets you access for slackers to the March Madness brackets. Get in there while you can. Uh, it gets you access to the most intelligent Lions chat on the internet and a whole number from cooking to cocktails and booze and beers and travel and home. I mean, there's so much going on, hundreds of people there, but it's the right hundreds of people because 
it's a, a great people group of people talking lions and doing it in a way that's respectful. There's 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 no other way I can I can put it. It's a great group of people to hang around with. You'll definitely want to be there. Patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast or join here as a member. Uh, Five dollars a month gets you access to the Slack. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Jeff Risden, as you see under his face right there, and at DET Lions Podcast. DET Lions Podcast. It's the best place to see either of us, both of us, and all of us. Hands free. Give us a call via Skype, Detroit Lions Podcast, all one word, Detroit Lions Podcast, or call us in the Lions line at 248 782 8384. 782 8384. 248 Rub, you fuck. Rub, you fuck. <laughs> Be sure to go to DetroitLionsPodcast.com. Subscribe to the podcast. Immediately hit the like and subscribe here. We forgot to tell you, oh, my God, 300 and some people. And there's only 90 likes. Hit the like button, please. And uh, what happens? If How'd you not hit the like button? Uh, I don't know. I don't know hit what's wrong like with people these days. You can't get any credit count on them. You don't. You got to remind them. Uh, what happens if people subscribe to the podcast at DetroitLionsPodcast.com, Riz? I get to come into your ear holes automatically. Very nice. <laughs> And after the combine ends, just so everyone knows, there's a great focus at that point on what's going to happen in uh, uh, for free agency. You're going to see a lot free of information, agency. a lot of stuff. We're going to have two big shows about free agency going deep on players and so on before it hits. But the time is co- combine now, free agency coming. You guys are going to love what we have. Last week we talked about positions of need. We're going to start diving into those players themselves very specifically. So we've got some really good shows coming up. Must listen stuff, much watch stuff coming up. So don't miss us. Thank you all for hitting that like button as we ask. You're really good folks. And thanks for joining us. We've got a lot coming up. More from Scott, more from Jeff, more from Chris. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time on the Detroit Lions podcast. Remember, no pants, no toasters, no hot tubs, no problems because we're your Detroit Lions and Reddit connection get something to eat buddy you look hungry